Hi everybody, JJ here with ASUS, and I'm excited to talk to you today about a brand new exclusive feature that we have on ASUS DDR5-Z690 based motherboards, specifically ASUS Enhanced Memory Profile, or AEMP. This brand new exclusive feature is gonna allow you to take your non-XMP DDR5 based memory models and essentially enhance or unlock additional levels of performance. By simply entering into the UEFI environment, you can enable either Profile 1, which will lower or tighten essentially the timings for your DDR5 memory module, or enable Profile 2, which allow you to go ahead and actually increase the operating frequency, allowing you to have even more bandwidth. In both situations, ultimately giving you a better level of system performance and a better experience for your non xp DDR5 memory modules. So let's go ahead and talk a bit more about DDR5, overclocking DDR5 memory, how AMP works, as well as actually how to enable it on ASUS Z690 based motherboards. So let's quickly talk about which motherboards will support this feature. Any one of our motherboards that feature DDR5 support will offer AMP support. Now it's important to keep in mind that this includes our Prime Series, our ProArt Series, as well as our ROG Strix Series and our ROG Maxima Series. Our Tough Gaming Series currently is limited to DDR4, so as such does not support this feature. And again, this feature is exclusive to DDR5 and not applicable to DDR4. Now beyond this, it's also important to keep in mind that this feature is only for non-XMP based memory modules. An example of this will include that right here, we've got this Kingston DDR5 uh, memory kit, and this features XMP profile. If we actually load this up and we take a look in the actual SPD tool, which is offered in ASUS series motherboards, as well as we actually go ahead and check if it does have an XMP profile, we'll see that it does have an XMP profile, which means that it would not allow you to set an AEMP profile. Now, if we go ahead and let's say take another memory module, such as this Patriot DDR5 memory module, which does not feature an XMP profile, you'll actually see within the UEFI environment that it will expose an option that lists itself as AEMP. So now let's talk a bit about understanding some of the basics behind performance tuning or overclocking memory. Now, before we go into that, it's important to keep in mind some of the baseline specifications. Now, generally, when you're looking at a stick of memory, uh, take for instance, this memory right here, if you're looking at the product page, or maybe you actually look at the memory itself and you take a look at the label, you'll see that the actual label will denote a couple of key pieces of information. One, the actual operating frequency. This kit of memory is a 4800 megahertz kit of memory. And then generally the timings for the memory. This is a CL40 kit of memory. Now, uh, both the frequency and the timings will vary depending on one, the type of memory uh, that's used on the actual memory module. Uh, this can be from different vendors like Micron, it could be from SK Hynix, it could be from Samsung. Uh, there are many different uh, manufacturers that produce the actual memory modules and different modules themselves have different ranges of speeds that they can support. Uh, this also aligns not only with the frequency that we talked about, but also uh, I'd say the, the range of timings that can be applied for the memory. Now, in most situations, you generally don't need to worry about this because uh, the specifications when you purchase the memory are pre-programmed and you essentially just have to have uh, those profiles loaded up and they will automatically be good to go and you'll be up and running. Now, when we talk about the performance tuning, uh, there is the actual opportunity to accessibly enhance the performance of those baseline specifications, meaning either one, you could attempt to tighten up your timings. Generally, the lower the timings, the better. So an example would be here, if we have a CL40 kit of memory, it would mean maybe tuning it down to like 38 uh, or 36 or 34, or maybe even something like 32. Um, in terms of the frequency, the higher, the better. So just like CPU frequency, uh, if we go ahead and increase this, we're gonna offer a higher level of performance and more bandwidth. So again, if we've got, let's say a 4,800 uh, megahertz kit of memory, if we went to 5,000, 5,400, 5,600, or 6,000 megahertz, these would offer us better performance. Now, one of the key things to keep in mind though, is that generally to be able to either tighten up memory or to increase its frequency, you actually have to modify the voltage. So one of the key things that changed when we transitioned from DDR4 to DDR5 was the implementation of something that was called the PMIC. This essentially PMIC is a little bit more readily visible here if we take a closer look at this actual exposed PMIC that's on our non-XMP DDR5 memory module. Essentially this PMIC is a voltage regulation module which defines essentially how much voltage uh, can be provided to the actual DRAM module itself. And this is important because generally voltage 
aligns with the frequency as well as timings. And what you'll generally find is actually that in XMP based DDR5 memory modules and overclocked uh, DDR5 memory modules that they will generally feature a higher operating voltage. This is actually what helps to allow for the scaling um, as far as frequency or the tightening of timings, um, as well as also helping to ensure stability at those corresponding values. Now there's generally two types of PMICs that are currently implemented right now when it comes to DDR5 memory modules. You have a more kind of conservative basic uh, PMIC, which is found generally on these more standard uh, modules. And then from there, you also have a kind of more overclocking centric PMIC, which you might find essentially on uh, XMP based DDR5 memory modules. Now, what we've gone ahead and done is essentially implemented specialized design and firmware implementation on ASUS Z690 series motherboards that feature ASUS enhanced memory profile technology to essentially bypass the limitations that are imposed by the PMIC. This allows us to essentially um, exceed the 1.1 voltage parameter that's defined by the PMIC and be able to scale up to, let's say, 1.25 or as much as uh, 1.45. Um, in these scenarios, alongside with specially tuned uh, memory profiles that are designed by our performance team, which are matched to the different types of memory ICs that are out there, uh, again, whether they're from Micron, from SK Hynix, whether they're from Samsung, allows you to essentially have an easy access to essentially either one profile, which is tuned for better efficiency uh, with essentially uh, tighter timings, or one that focuses on giving you even more memory bandwidth by increasing the memory frequency with profile two. Uh, when this is ultimately all put in the form of an easy profile option that you have available in the UEFI, they both ultimately give you a better experience. So let's go ahead and actually find out how to enable this function within our UEFI firmware. So to take advantage of this feature, all we're gonna need to do is essentially install our memory onto the motherboard. And once we've gone ahead and installed this memory on the motherboard, we just need to enter into the UEFI environment. Now, once we get into the UEFI, it's gonna be a pretty straightforward process. You essentially just need to either go to your primary easy mode interface, or you can go to the advanced mode interface and toggle on the ASUS Extreme Memory Profile option. Once you toggle this, uh, you essentially have two options. You can go ahead and select either the baseline uh, profile one, which is gonna be designed for superior efficiency. Essentially, it won't add any additional voltage, uh, but just through careful analysis and through specialized profiles that we've gone ahead and tuned, which are specific to the type of memory that is gonna be on your DDR5 memory module, we will go ahead and tighten up the timings, overall giving you better efficiency and better performance. If you actually uh, wanna attempt even a higher level of performance, you can shift over into profile two, which will go ahead and extend the frequency from its baseline. In our uh, case here, we're gonna see an actual improvement from the baseline of 4,800 megahertz uh, all the way up to actually 6,000 megahertz. And in addition to this, we'll also see actually a reduction in the timings as well. So we're actually gonna get both areas, uh, which are critical to the overall performance of memory, uh, improved upon by utilizing uh, Exus Extreme Memory Profile. Now, once you apply this, you just go ahead and uh, save and exit, essentially the F10 key on your keyboard and reboot and you will be good to go. Now it is uh, important to keep in mind that because this is a form of overclocking, it is not necessarily 100% guaranteed. There may be certain configurations uh, which may produce instability. And if that's the case, you would essentially just want to reset your motherboard by using the clear CMOS option on your motherboard or by removing the battery and then reinstalling it to revert your motherboard back to its default operating parameters. For most situations, the most conservative setting which would generally produce the highest level of reliability and assurance in terms of use will be profile one but we'll generally find that many users can confidently use profile two now once you've done this you can go ahead and re-enter into the uefi environment and you can check that the actual corresponding asus extreme memory profile has been applied and you can check that the actual corresponding frequency is present if you actually have one of our rog series motherboards that feature our integrated mem test technology you can actually run a memory test to validate the actual uh, new profile which is currently running uh, or you can also attempt to go ahead and go into windows and also take advantage of the ada 64 license which comes included with our rog series motherboards this is a great way to also again validate not only the uh, speed of the the memory, but also actually run a stress test. And you can even run a performance test, helping you to create a compare and contrast between the baseline frequency as well as the higher end frequency. 
So that wraps up our AMP video. Hopefully you found it interesting, insightful, and ultimately useful, and ultimately helps to validate why picking an ASUS board was the right choice in terms of giving you the best DDR5 experience. This, alongside many other features and functions that we've got detailed in other videos, which you can check out, really help to give you the best PC DIY building experience. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, feel free to go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below, or email us at pcdiy at asus.com, or join our PC DIY Facebook group, which is linked in the description as well. So with that, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day, and best of luck with your build.